Claire Graves was so astonished by second tier structures, he had never seen anything like them. And yet he maintained that that was the actual essence of being human. And I'm doing this really to ask Ken questions because I'm curious myself about how we apply the stages or levels of development with the reality that we're living in with a lot of polar opinions around things like pandemics and vaccines. So that's going to be the context of this conversation. And I'm hoping that Ken can shine a light on us regarding, you know, what the best ways to act are. I mean, that's, that's really what these frameworks and what Ken's work is about is giving us structures by which we can see how we grow and how we wake up so that way we can act accordingly. So I want to jump in, Ken, and, and just go right for it, uh, talking about the levels of development, particularly when someone is evolving their life and they're doing work on themselves and they're meditating and they're going through these stages uh, of thinking, these stages of values, uh, and they get to the point where they're making the transition over uh, from uh, you know, first tier thinking into second tier right. thinking or the integral level. Right. And the way that I want to frame out this question is, it's something that you had said to me when we did this initial course together, which was the way that you can tell someone who's integral is that if you go to a party, the person that, or the people that are at the integral level are going to be friends with everybody. And you use that as a really good understanding to say that at the integral level of understanding of thinking, we, or people that are that way, understand that all the levels before them hold truth, right? right? They all hold some validity to their way of thinking. So right. can you shine a little bit more on that distinction on that way of thinking about the integral level so we can understand? Right. Um, these stages of development, are ones that humanity has had and actually a very hard time seeing and discovering in themselves. So human beings as homo sapiens, the oldest previous example of a homo sapien we found was around 200,000 years old. Now they found one that's around 300,000 years old. So we've been on this planet as homo sapiens for 300,000 years. And it was only around a hundred years ago that we discovered these stages of growing up, as I call them. And that's because you can't see them by looking within. So meditation and the process that I call waking up, attaining an enlightenment or an awakening or waking up, that's a first person state. So you can look within and see it directly. So we have experiences of Zen or various types of waking up going back several thousand years. And human beings have had religious structures for thousands of years because you can see those by looking within or introspecting or meditating or contemplating. But you can't see the stages of growing up by looking within. So they're very much like, let's say, rules of grammar. You and I, or anybody that's brought up in a particular culture, learns that culture's language quite accurately. They put subject and verbs together correctly. They use adjectives correctly. And in general, they follow the rules of grammar of that language quite accurately. But just like structures of growing up, you can't see the structures of grammar by looking within. So even though you and I are following depending on which model you use, but from several dozen to several hundred rules of grammar, as you and I are talking and understanding each other, neither one of us could look within and write down what all of those rules were. Right. So for that reason, it was only about 100 years ago that these structure stages of growing up were actually discovered. Mm -hmm. And so that's important to realize because do you want to say so my, well, yeah, my question is so the, the way so when you say they were discovered it's almost as if the evolution of thinking got to the point where we could then be observant of the process itself right. is that an accurate way to say it and it's from yeah. that observer viewpoint that we can then see these stages is that correct essentially yes and what that means is that in the shift from first stage to second stage and we'll talk about what that shift means mm -hmm. and then i'll give some examples sure. of how you can get it in your own life, as it were. Um, but in terms of what it means is second tier is a very recent development in human awareness. And of all the models of development, most of them, well, there are 
between four stages and 20 stages of total growing up or human development that are given by various models. And I did a book called Integral Psychology, where in the back I gave charts of over a hundred different developmental models. So you can look at that if you want to and get an idea of what's going on. But what's so interesting is that the distinction between first tier and second tier, which is generally made by uh, a brilliant researcher named Claire Graves, and you can find that his research is the basis of a fairly popular model called spiral dynamics. And so anybody can check that out if they want to get more of that particular version. But first tier covers all of the stages of development in human history that have occurred up until almost 1960. And the reason that they separated first tier, and then it was only starting around 1960 or so that we started to see a fairly large scale development of the structures that are called second tier. And what that meant was Claire Graves was so astonished by second tier structures, he had never seen anything like them. And yet he maintained that that was the actual essence of being human, Wasn't, didn't even emerge until what he called second tier. And he separated first tier from second tier simply because the second tier stages are so profound in what they do. And if you look back in, in history in terms of what each stage has contributed. Um, and I'll use some names for first tier sure. stages. And there are a hundred different models that each give them different names to these stages. Uh, I'll use the ones that Gene Gebser, who's a brilliant developmental theorist came up with. And he called them the archaic to the magic, to the mythic, to the rational, to the pluralistic postmodern stages of development. And so if you look at magic stages, they were like what our hunter gatherer first forms of humans did when they moved out of their archaic stage, which was mostly when they were still sort of fused with the great apes. And so magic, if you think of the Paleolithic cave drawings, there's uh, pictures of humans imposed on buffalo, imposed on, etc. And most scholars think that that was because they had a magical worldview. And then that existed for around 50,000 years until around 10,000 years BC. And then humanity started developing to what Gibson called the mythic stages of development. And we all know mythic stages quite well, because first of all, a fair number of human beings remain at the mythic stages in their adult development, but also almost all of the world's religions, when we think of the world's religions, were created during this mythic stage of development. And human beings today, one of the things that we discovered about this is that in a sense, ontogeny does recapitulate phylogeny. In other words, we first developed our cave stage, then historically developed the magic stage, then historically moved to the mythic stage, then the rational stage and the pluralistic stage, and then integral stages. But every person born today goes through those same stages in their own development. And everybody, of course, can, can go to different levels of this growing up. And we also have what's called multiple intelligences, which means we don't just have a cognitive intelligence. We also have an emotional intelligence, a moral intelligence, an aesthetic intelligence, a spiritual intelligence, a social intelligence, a bodily intelligence, and so on. And each of those intelligences are relatively independent in how they grow and develop. So any one of those intelligences can end up at an archaic stage or a magic stage or a mythic stage or a rational stage or a pluralistic stage or an integral stage.